Damn. So good evening, love my friends at the uh, online part of the class. <clears throat> Welcome back to another episode of the online part reading class organized by uh, Parisotan. Today, All right, so today uh, I'll be going to uh, uh, finish the class by uh, 7 10 ish because I have a super discussion to go. Uh, so, leave it some time to uh, go. So, we'll be uh, finishing by 7 10, 7 10 ish. And uh, I was looking at, I was looking at uh, the participants. Um, all right. Uh, uh, recently, I got the, the youngest participant uh, into our class. I know you are young in your heart, whatever. Uh, she's 19 years old, uh, a student from somebody who is keeping up with Dhamma work, my Dhamma work. Uh, her name is uh, Litasa. Give some time for to come in. All right. I will talk about it when she signs. So today uh, we'll be looking at another section of the Metta Sutta. Before we get started, let's pay respect to the book. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Namu tasse padevetu arehatu, Samma sambun tasse. Namu tasse padevetu arehatu, Samma sambun tasse. Namu tasse padevetu arehatu, Samma sambun tasse. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh... Okay. So this is the second stanza of the. Metta Sutta. Santu Sako Cha Subharu Cha Appa Kicho Cha Sal Lahuka Buddhi Santindriyo Cha Nipako Cha Appa Gabbo Pulesu Ananu Gidru Santu Sako Cha Subharu Cha Appa Kicho Cha Sal Lahuka Buddhi Some people they uh, they read like sal sal lahuka sal lahuka sal yes. the post has to be here sal lahuka sal lahuka bhutti santindriyo cha nipako cha appagabho kulesu anamukit 
right? So we will be asking uh, our friends to uh, read. Right, so uh, group uh, one. Yes, please. Yes, thank you. Santo Sakocha Subarocha, Upper Kitchocha Salla Hukavuti, Santindriocha Nipacocha, Upper Gabbo Colesu, Ananugitdo. Interesting. Great. Thank you, Vente. Yes. Okay, so here we have the youngest uh, student here, Alitasa. She's uh, 19 years old from uh, Dallas, Texas. I hope that you will uh, understand <laughs> what we are doing here. Uh, it's not pretty much uh, an adult class. I learned some uh, Pali and uh, some of the content. All right, Alitasa? Okay. All right, so then group two. Group two, uh, main oi, are you going to read? Yes. Santori sako cha subaro cha apa kicho cha salahu kawuti santin drio cha nipako cha apa gambo kulesu ananu gindo uh, uh, Sister Oli, uh, can you read this part again? Apa kincho cha salahu. There is no J actually. Apa kincho cha salahu kamuti. Apa kincho, apa kincho cha salahu kauti. So this <laughs> second word, uh, you can see the second word sal. This, this word has to be uh, pronounced by posing here. Sal lahu ka uti. Sal lahu ka uti. Like this. All right. Sal. Sa. La. La. Ku ka uti. Sal. Sa. Sa. La. Lahu ka uti. Sa. Sa lahu ke uti. Lahu ke. Don't give Lahu ke uti. Ah, great. There you go. Sal lahu ke uti. Not sal lahu ke uti. That's a wrong pronunciation. Sal lahu ke uti. Sal lahu ke uti. There you make a mistake. <laughs> don't, don't go slow. Sal Lahuka. You have to pronounce Salahuka Uti. Salahuka Uti. Correct. Salahuka. Sa. Salahuka. Now, what I'm trying to say is that try to pronounce the word, the whole word at the same time. Not Salahuka Uti. Salahuka Uti. Salahuka Uti. Ah, very good. Okay. Sal lahuka vutti. Appa kicho cha sal lahuka vutti. All right. Appa uh, kicho cha. Yeah. Appa okay. kicho cha sal. Thank you, Bante. Lahuka vutti. All right. Uh, group three. Group three. Is Chupin from group three? Hello. Yeah. Hi. Chupin, are you from group three? Yes, yes. Okay, please go ahead. Santu Sakocha Subarocha. Apa Kichocha Sarakokomuti. Santin Riocha Nipokocha. Apa Gabu Kulesu Anubigido. Kulesu? Kulesu Anubigido. I think I, I didn't hear that. 
kulesu apa gabu kulesu anadu gido ah anadu gido anadu gido gido then uh, group four yes kebio yes thank you mate santu sakocha suba rocha apa rocha salapu ka putte santindrio cha nipa kocha apa gabo kulesu ananu gito uh, I wanted to say something about uh, Sister Ong. Uh, last weekend, we had a very interesting retreat in Penang. Uh, she and her husband uh, uh, were coordinating, and Sadhu to uh, you, I just sharing with our other friends over here. Uh, it was a very good retreat. And, uh, Thank you, Sadhu. Yes, yes. All right. And then. Uh, Sadhu, Sadhu. Yes. <laughs> and group five. Yes, Melinda. Thank you. Thank you, Bante. Santu Sako Chesu Baro Che Apagicho Che Sala Hukawoti Santi Rio Santin Rio Che Nipako Che Apagabo Kolesu Anadu Gitto. Great. Thank you. Group six. Yes, this is done. Thank you. <clears throat> Santu Sako Cha Subaru Cha Apakicho Cha Sala Sa Lukut Sa La Huka Uti Santi Drio Cha Nipako Cha Apagabo Kulesu Anadu Gito. Right, group seven. Yeah, some of the group seven. Group eight. Yeah, group eight. Yes, CHR. Okay, thank you, Bante. Uh, okay. Santu sako cha subaro cha apa kicho cha salah kawati santin rio cha nipako cha apa gabbo kulesu anang nungit do. All right, great. Now I'm giving the opportunity to others who would like to read. Can I raise the hand? Yes, we will start from uh, Oi. Yes, please. Thank you, Bante. Yes. Santu Sakocha Subarocha Apakichocha Sa Lahukauti Santin Riocha Nipakucha Apagabo Kulesu Ananugido. Great. Thank you, Bante. And we have uh, Parpuna. Good evening, Bante. Yes. Santo Sakocha Subaro Cha Apa Kicho Cha Sa Lahuka Wuti Santin Trio Cha Nipako Cha Apa Gapo Kulesu Ananu Gitu. Can you uh, repeat uh, the second line again, please? Apa okay. Kicho Cha Sa Lahuka Wuti. Ah, we don't have to say Sa Lahuka Wuti. Sa Lahuka Wuti. See here? Sa Lahuka Sal, hmm? then lahuka at the same time. One word. Sal lahuka wood. Sal lahuka wood. Ah, great. If you're going to break them, uh, there will be a different pronunciation. All right, okay. then Jenny. Jenny, I think we cannot hear you. Something wrong with it. Is it? Can you ah, hear me now? Yes. Ah, okay. Ah, Santo Sako Che Subaro Che Apa Kicho Che Sal la, Sal Lahuka Wuti Santin Rio Che Nipako Che Apa Gabbo Kulesu Anano Gito Great. Thank and you. And then we have Ryan Chen. Yes. Thank you, Bante. 
Santu sako ce separo ce apa kicu ce sala huka muti. Santin griyo ce nipako ce apa kapo lesu ananu gitu. Now you know, would you try again the same word that everybody is trying to pronounce? The sa, sa la huka muti. Sa la huka muti. Sa la huka muti. One word. Lahuka is one word, right? Actually, lahuka is one word. Although it is combined in one Pali word, here it's combined just for the pronunciation purpose. But lahuka means what you call little, little, minimal, little, minimal. So that's why we have to say lahuka. Sal lahuka. Sal lahuka. Uti. Ah, great. Thank you, Bante. Right, so we have uh, Seri. Thank you, Bhante. Santu seko cha suparo cha apa kicu cha salahu ke buti. Santin riyo cha nipako cha apa gabo kulesu anano gitu. Again, salahu ke buti. Salahu ke buti. No, salahu ke buti. So when you say salah huka uti me, then you don't pronounce that particular word inside. Apa ki chocha sal la huka uti. Apa ki chocha sal la huka uti. Okay, I'll try again, Bante. Yes. Apa ki chocha sal la huka uti. Sal la huka uti. Don't pronounce huka separately. See, H-U-K-A was pronounced separately here. So it has to be lahuka. As you can see here, lahuka. Sal lahuka uti. Sal lahuka uti. Ah, see, there you go. Sal lahuka uti. Sal lahuka uti. Sal lahuka uti. Then you made a mistake. You said properly and then you made a mistake. Sal lahuka uti. Salahuka uti. Salahuka, one word. If I write this, this is the proper word. Salahuka. Lahuka. There are two L, so I have to pronounce it. Sal. No, one L is a part of the previous word. One L is not a part of this word. Sal is one, and lahuka is one, and uti is one. So I pronounce as sal lahuka uti. Sal lahuka uti. Sal lahuka uti. All right. Sal lahuka uti. Sal lahuka uti. Sal lahuka. Ah, see, lahuka means little, small, you know, minimalist. Yeah. All right, and then now we have low billing. Yes, Billy. Billy, are you with us? Bante. Yes. Oh, sorry, sorry. Santu sako ce subaro ce. Apa kicu ce sal lahu ke buti. Santin drio ce nipako ce. Apa gabo kulesu ananu gido. Can you go again to the same word? Sal lahu ke buti. Apa kicau ce sal lahu ke buti? Sal lahu ke buti. Sal lahu ke buti. Lahu ke buti. Lahu ke buti. Yeah, lahu ke means small, little. Little, little. Minimalist approach. All right, then we have Corinna. Hello. Yes, Corinna. Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Santu sako ce suparo ce apa gico ce salahu ka wuti. Santrin trio ce nipako ce apa gabo kulesu anadu gido. I have concerns about the first two lines again here. Can you go again slowly? Santu sako ce suparo ce apa gico ce salahu ka wuti. Okay, apa gico? Second line says apa kicu, fourth line says apa gabu. 
apa kicu je salah buka buti. Apa kicu je sal lahu ke buti. Apa kicu je salah buka buti. Don't try to connect. These oh. are three words. Apa okay. kicu je sal lahu ke buti. Apa kicu je sal lahu ke buti. Ah. Little, little strange to you because you might have been chanting in that way before. Now I'm trying to say uh, there is a pronunciation uh, thing that we have to be concerned. All right, okay. we have end. Thank you, Bante. Yes, sir. Santus sakoche suparoche apa kicho che salahuka wuti. Santin Rio Che Nipako Che Apa Gapbo Kule Su Anano Gitdo. Yeah, same issue. Now, now let me tell you an easy way to understand this. There is no Pali meaning for hooker. Oh. HUK has no meaning. The word is Lahuka. Lahuka. Ah, hooker has no meaning. Lahuka. It's, it's just a part of that particular full word. So that's why when you pronounce, you should try to pronounce the full word, right? Now, for example, if you pronounce, uh, let's say, uh, a Pali word, uh, in a way, let's take a very interesting word. You're actually going to break it in a way so the, so the full word is not reflected. So there's no Pali word called hukka. Hukka is a word attack. Hukka is a part of the full word. Lahuka is the full word. Apa kicu je salah huka buti. Apa kicu je salah huka buti. Sal salah huka buti. Salah huka buti. Ah, then then it's clear. That means a buti means a, a behavior or a life. Salah huka means a minimalist life. This is the meaning actually. So a minimalist life, a light life. All right, and we have then Doris. Thank you, Bante. Thank you, Bante. Yes. Santu sako cha subaro cha apa kicho cha sal lahu ke buti. Santin rio cha dipako cha apa gabo kulesu ananu gitdo. Yeah, the same uh, concern. Back to the second uh, uh, line. Sal lahu ke buti. Sal lahu ke buti. Thank because you. Uh, most of us uh, chant uh, by listening to others, isn't it? Like when monks chant, we catch yes. it the same way. Yeah. Uh, but when you, uh, sometimes when people want to read the text, they cannot get the, what do you call, the style of the chant. Because what do you call, the poses can be a little different than actual actual chant. So, now when we, when we look at the the Pali words properly, you would see that we cannot break in a way that the full word is not reflected. So, Appa kicho cha sal lahu ke buti. Appa kicho cha sal lahu ke buti. Is it better, Bandi? Better. Getting better. Thank you. Thank you, Bandi. <laughs> All right. And we have Christine. Okay. I'll start. Santu yes. sako che subaru che apa kicho che sal lahuka uti. Santi trio che nipako che apa gapo kulesu ananu gitu. Apa kicho che sal lahuka uti. Apa kicho che sal lahuka uti. Uh, start from uh, the second L as a separate word. First L is going for the first one. Sal lahu ke buti. Sal lahu ke buti. Great. Great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. I think that's all. Maybe I'm going to be asking uh, Litasa. Litasa, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Would you like to try? Yes. Santu Sakocha Sibarocha Apa Kichocha Salahakoti Sandri Giocha Nipakocha Apa Gabo Kaleso Anurigidu. Great. So again, Apa Kichocha Sal Lahukabuti. Apa Kichocha Sal Lahukabuti. 
Okay. Right? Gonna be looking at this way. Sang lahuka buti. As you can see here, there, these are three words. Apa kichota sal lahuka buti. Let me erase, I think, start back again. Sal is one. Lahuka is the second. Buti is the third. Now it says, yeah. Apa kichota sal lahuka buti. Yeah, take time, but uh, we need to break uh, the, the Pali words that I actually spread it in this second line, in the second actually uh, combination. All right, so anybody else who would like to read? All right, Suzanne, yes, please go ahead. Thank you. Santu Sakocha, Subharocha, Apa Kichocha, Salahoka Buti, Santindriocha, Nipakocha, Apa Gapo, Kulesu, Ananu Githo. The same thing to say here, we have to break it, break the second word into three when we pronounce Apa Kichocha, Sal Lahuka Buti. Sal lahuka buti. Ah, sal lahuka buti. Sal right. lahuka. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Anybody else? All right. Because we have a very short time today, I'm going to uh, do the explanation just to uh, save some time. Okay. Uh, now, my friends, we have come to the second stanza already with this. Now, I told you at the beginning that this Metta Sutta talks about two things. What are the two things that this Metta Sutta talks about? First, this Sutta talks about one five skillful habits, skillful, 15 skillful habits. That means in order for us to practice loving kindness, I think the better transition could be unlimited uh, friendliness, we need to cultivate 15 skillful habits. Now, the other day we learned about uh, some of the we call uh, some of the uh, habits. Let's go back again here. Okay. Okay, we learn over here a couple of them. Sakko, first, Uju 2, Soju 3, Suachu 4, Mutu 5, Anadimani 6, right? Almost 6. We learn 6 skillful habits. And today we can see Santo Sako is one, then Subharu, Appakicho, Sallahukavutti, Santindriyo, Nipako, Appagapu, Kulesu Ananukit. There are uh, almost uh, how many uh, skillful habits are there in this verse? Eight, right? There are eight. So, uh, that means if you look at the both stanzas, the stanza we did uh, last uh, Thursday and today now, we have we will be discussing, almost going to be finished about 14 skillful habits. So that means only one is remaining. Huh? That, so that one will be coming up in the third stanza. You have to take the first two lines. Okay, the first skillful habit in the second stanza is some to support. What does Suttu Sako mean? To Sako. Any, any thoughts? To Sako. To Sako means? Contented. Uh, well, no. I understand. Satisfied. Satisfied. Yeah, according to our understanding, satisfaction and content are two things. Even oh. if, yes. Now, when you say satisfied, uh, satisfaction is not necessarily being content. All right. So, well, I mean, overall, if you take it uh, as a whole, English words might not reflect everything, but there's a difference. So that's why we are not taking this as satisfaction in the first place. So Tusako is something... Uh, like a state of mind where somebody is happy about what's happening. 
that happiness could be moral or immoral. But when you add sung, some means well, that means well content. That means you are happy ethically. You have this ethical happiness. You are happy in wholesome ways. Right? Content. Any thoughts about this Santusako in your own understanding? Now, if you look at uh, uh, Pali uh, suttas and stories, have you ever found out some good thoughts about uh, Santusako? Uh, remember, there was a there was there's a Jataka story. I can't remember the name. That uh, one king was really greedy about. Uh, you know, invading other other territories uh, adjacent to his area. So one day the Sakka, the head of the gods, thought, I would trick him. How am I going to trick him? I would go as a normal person. I, I, I have to uh, be incognito. So I'm going to go to the palace. I'm going to go to the main gate. I'm going to tell the royal forces that I know certain areas that your king, majesty, can go and invade. And then, uh, then actually, uh, when he came to the main gate of the palace, uh, he said, I know certain places which you have never, which your king has not ever seen, but I will only tell these places to the king, not to you. Then uh, they informed the king. The king asked them to uh, bring him to the chamber or probably the place and then he said uh, there are six places that you can invade you can uh, go and uh, you know fight and take over but because the king is so greedy about the things he didn't didn't even want to know where are where are those places located he asked all the forces to get ready right? and then the sakka left he was just a man right they, they didn't know so ever since now King is very worried. Now, king has all the power, but he, now the forces are asking, where are we going to go to invade this place? He said, I couldn't ask this from the man. The man just said there are places available. So ever since he became sick and ill, nobody could, uh, you know, what do you call, cure him. And then one day, somehow, the Bodhisattva, the Shakyamuni Buddha in his past life, was invited after many, many uh, fail attempts by other uh, prohitas like Brahmins. And then he slowly asked uh, Dear Majesty, uh, you know, because nobody could understand what was the root cause of this uh, issue, his health issue. Then he slowly went down to the room and then said, now the king, you don't know the places, so you don't have to worry about uh, this thing because you may worry a little bit if you know the places and if you cannot take them all. Actually, in our life, this happens. Huh? We have lots of expectations, but those expectations are unrealistic. So we are worrying every day. Right? We think we would we would like to make it, but there is no practical plan. Actually, there is not going to happen. It is not realistic. But we still imagine, we still like uh, create thoughts about it. So, for that kind of a person, the true happiness is very, very far from that stage. So, according to the Buddha's teachings, what we understand is that happiness is a mental state. And we are looking at this whole pain body. We have lots of pains. Rather, we call it as suffering. Now, I think it's not a good way to say it. We are looking at this pain body. And how we can look at this pain body and this painful everything since our birth, since our conception, and try to understand what it is. At the same time, looking at the worldly happiness and looking at the unworldly happiness, extra mundane happiness. Right? So it's a very big concept. So uh, it's really uh, hard to find people who can be having this Santu support in the long run. Right now, one thing that we can think about this Santusako is giving a dan. That's a very interesting point. When somebody is offering dan, the most important thing that the Buddha advised us was to think about the state of the mind. 
It's not just how much money you invest in that dam. So it doesn't mean that you can do a very basic dam, right? You should aim for a dam that is suitable for you, right? It's like a taxing. Huh? Low income people pay less tax, rich people pay higher tax, right? So you have to give dam in your, according to your level, right? But the uh, success of your dharma depends on how you are going to carry the thoughts, wholesome thoughts, throughout the time. Some people, they offer dharma, they are okay, but during the dharma also they are okay. Sometimes they might be coming up with an unwholesome thought after the dharma, thinking that I was not uh, perfection, perfection is enough, that there were things that I could not men I, I could not address in the dan. Oh, I, I forgot about the fruit salad. I forgot about this dish and that dish. I couldn't invite this friend, right? So you are creating some uh, regrets and remorseful thoughts. So then you are going to bring down that happiness, right? So anyways, the Buddha says, if we really want to practice metta, we should be able to have a certain level of happiness, I would say. In this case, uh, being content. Being content is very important. It's not satisfaction. We might be satisfied, we might be not satisfied, but being content is the point here. Santu Sakur. Then, Subharu. What does Bhara mean? Bhara? Bhara mean supportability. Supportability. So we should be people who can be easily supported by, by others. Right? Let's say uh, you are someone uh, in a household that you are depending on somebody else. You are not that independent. You are not trying to uh, give burden to other people. And not even that. Wherever you go, whatever you do, you are such a very an easygoing person. Right? You don't have to uh, make a big uh, mess. Right? You, are, you can survive anyway. Right? So, Subharo means that. But uh, the opposite is that there are people where they have lots of complaints about everything. Have you seen such people? Wherever they go, whatever they do, whatever they eat, they have all the complaints. No one single comeback of any positive. Maybe they have this from the generations and they have this from friends, right? Because friends really affect us. It's, it's very important because our thoughts, our attitudes are changed, uh, you know, depending on how we associate. So if we, if we are surrounded by many complainers, let's say you, you have friends who also complain a lot and you will be affected. And then you will also start to complain. You were not a complainer. But now you are trying to complain, like your friends, because you think the whole world is like your friends. Right? So be careful. You should be able to be somebody who can be easily uh, supported by anybody, even by yourself, not even by other people. Let's say you are someone who has a very uh, complicated daily routine. You think that I have to do this. I, I must do this. If I don't do it, my day is not going to work. Sometimes, uh, on some days, we cannot follow the same routine that we've been doing. You might have overslept. You might be sick. You might have to attend to other activities. So you cannot operate uh, as usual. Right? So even you should not be a burden to yourself. Don't create thoughts that this is the only way that I can be happy. Right? So you are you are someone who is very flexible to understand what's going on. So you are not even going to be a burden to yourself based on your thoughts, based on your views. You know, ultimately uh, nailing down to the, uh, you know, uh, mental states. Right? So that is Subharu. Bharu means uh, what you call uh, support. Right? Subharu. Santu Sakocha Subharocha and Appa Kikcho. What does Appa Kikcho mean? Huh? Having few duties. 
Bante, having few duties. Having duties. Can we uh, reduce our duties when we when you are living in household? Now, let's say you are a mother, you are a grandmother, you are a father, you are a spouse. Can we reduce our responsibilities? No. How do we understand? Do we understand? Let's say you are saying to someone in the household, I've been doing this for 10, 20, 10 years, but now from today, I'm not doing it. So you have to do it by yourself. I think things might be a little unpleasant at that point. They might not be ready to uh, take it over from you. So here, upper two means we are we all are busy. We have to be busy. Why? I believe if we are not busy, we will gossip a lot. All the bad. Sometimes when we are not busy, all the unwholesome thoughts are coming up. Because we don't have to do anything. We just we just try to pick on other people. We we might talk about unnecessary trashy things, and uh, you know. And sometimes uh, when you are all alone, some unwholesome thoughts can easily come to you. And it depends mo to most people because most people's uh, thoughts are not properly developed. They develop only on the cushion, uh, not off the cushion. <laughs> I always say your meditation is only on the cushion. Try to try to practice meditation off the cushion. See whether it can work for you. Right, and right. Regardless of you are on the cushion, you are off the cushion. If your mind, if your thoughts are trained, what a beautiful state of mind is that. Nobody can disturb you. You will be with a lot of bad people, a lot of unnecessary people, troublemakers, problem makers. But you are not complaining. You understand who they are. You understand who you are. You understand where you want to go. So nothing can disturb us. Be that the forest, be that uh, uh, bustling city. A lot of crowd, a lot of sounds, but you are trained. You are calm. That is the perfect place, state of mind that we are trying to be. So, Appakicho means not doing less work. Appakicho means that you are trying to understand the nature of your work, but you are not trying to do a lot of things. That is one thing too, because if you are going to do a lot of things, you might not be doing anything properly. Right, some uh, as good as uh, can we multitask? Are we not supposed to multitask? Or are we only supposed to unitask? Only do one thing. How do we understand now? You know, like one thing at a time. Yeah, we might do a lot of things, a lot of things, but but in real time, we do one thing at one time. But we may have to multitask because this is not 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s anymore. Because we have to understand how things are going to work, right? But we are trying to, we are we, we may be busy, definitely. There's no uh, argument about it. But you have to have the number of work, the amount of work that you can take care of. So don't, don't uh, accept things that you cannot work on. Right, even when you are listening to a Dhamma talk, try to take more time for reflection. You might be listening to 10, 20 Dhamma talks all along, then you are not reflecting any of this Dhamma talk. So, try to listen to a manageable amount of number of Dhamma talks. Right, so also other things maybe your uh, you know, outdoor life, indoor life, your uh, what do you call everything. So, you should be able to. Bring them under your management. That is important. But when it comes to upper kitchu, it means that you know how to do them. You are not creating any stress out of it. Right? Stress is a big issue in today's world, right? Why are we getting stressed out? The reason? When the when the task that we are supposed to do become challenges to us, then we are not. We are not. Well, not comfortable doing it. Ah, feeling comfortable about it. Thinking that whether I can keep up with this. I have a backlog. I can't clear them. You know, because I have too many things going on. So I think um, what we have to understand is that try to have a manageable amount, a number or amount of work. Uh, that work can be your household, could be your work life, could be your social life, could be whatever the thing. But try to bring them under a manageable amount, manageable number, so you know you can do it. Otherwise, 
you are trying to accept many things. Sometimes you are going to please other people. If I don't accept, my friend will be unhappy. Okay? So you are going to be you are going to be unhappy just because you want to make your friend happy. Okay? Try to find a balance, perfect balance. Nobody should nobody should deserve to be unhappy. I mean, I mean, uh, especially looking at the ethical part. So try to think about your life at the same time. Take care of other people the proper way. So upper kitchen simply means that you may be doing multitasking, but one thing at a time. Do one thing very well at a time. And also understand whether the, these tasks, these tasks are really manageable or not. If they are not manageable, I think you have to think about either to either to uh, bring them down, probably to walk away, probably to uh, reflect uh, different ways how uh, in how I'm going to uh, respond to these events. Have to learn but, how to say no. Uh, yeah, a polite no. A, uh, what do you call it? A polite de what do you call it? A decline. decline right? That's yeah. really hard for many people to say. They cannot politely decline. Say no. No means no. Those so other people getting upset about it. Madam, how come you say no to me? I've been helping you. So you have to find out how to be smart in saying no uh, in different polite ways. I think that is one thing, but there are many other ways to operate. You know, many other ways to think about how not to take unnecessary, uh, you know, burden onto your life. I mean, looking at your daily life from morning to evening. Sal api. This is the word. Sal lahuka bhutti. Sal lahuka bhutti means lahuka means a minimal. Bhutti means a life. Now in today's world, people are talking about becoming a minimalist. Have you ever, ever heard that? Become a minimalist. A small house. Uh, right? Everything is very small. <laughs> and then the bed is not separate. Bed is also coming from the wall, right? And right, you don't see the bed. Where is the bed? The bed is inside the wall. New houses, custom-made houses, like in Hong Kong. And uh, you see uh, uh, a very small area. Uh, many things are built in. This furnished nature is like a little different than we think about normal house. And yeah, so this minimalist thinking. What does then San uh, Lahuka Mutti mean? Is it is it that modern minimalist life or is it something a little different than minimalist life? Any thoughts? Honestly, does, it, does it mean yes. a simple a simple life? Yes, simple life. But simple life has is a loaded word actually. It's a concept. Some people take it into a very minimalist life. So simple life, they take it, they want to downsize everything. We don't need big houses, right? We might not own the house. We might rent the house. Why we want to buy the house? If our children want to buy the house, let them go and buy the house. But we, we, we will be on rent. We don't need lots of furniture. We don't need lots of channels on TV. <laughs> One gentleman told me a long time ago. When I went to his house in Edmonton, Bhante, you know, I didn't ask, Bhante, you know, this TV now has only 10 channels. So I asked, what's the problem with the number of channels? Now, this has only the Canadian, uh, what do you call, TV channels, a couple of free channels, and National Geographic. All right. So what is the relationship with this thing and the Buddhism? Yeah, because I cut down the numbers. Okay, you cannot afford, let's go for it. Cutting down, I mean, if you, I mean, cutting down does not always mean that you're cutting down the things. You are cutting down the conceptual proliferation attached to those thoughts. You may still have the TV, but you know how to cut it down from your mental states themselves. Not that you always try, you can certainly, let's say your, your children are not anymore with you, they are in the university, they are working outside. Why do you maintain a big house? This might be a question, but somebody might say, no, 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 we need a house. I like a big house, right? I like a big house, but my thoughts are very simple. 
So it's it's really difficult to uh, draw the thin line, you know, between this simple life, minimalist life. So we cannot pick up an idea. It is a very small log house where you see the <laughs> nature from out, from inside. Right. So the idea here is, as Suzanne said, simple life. Simplicity means different things to different people, isn't it? Some people might cut down the money. Some people even uh, go for a, an early retirement, right? They might say, I don't want to make more money. Some people might think about, no, 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 I, even we can afford, we're going to use a very simple car. So, but whatever, whatever you think, the simple life here means that you are someone who does not have lots of, uh, you know, non-manageable wishes in your life, right? Sometimes we might be carried away by what other people do. We might be carried away by our imaginations, but we have to know what we really, what I really want in my life. I think that is how you're going to customize your simplicity. You have to customize. You don't need to find out somebody's minimalist behavior. Like those folks who have uh, who have stopped working and they're now doing YouTube channels going everywhere in the world saying that everybody should do this. This is simple life. Can we all do that? Quit, quit from job and then just travel everywhere in the world, make money. For them, it might be a minimalist life, but not for many other people. So you have to find out your simple life. Because simple life is good. Simple life does not mean that that you have to cut down always. It could be a little different stuff too. Probably your thoughts are very manageable. Your plans are manageable. Your plans are, uh, what do you call, realistic. They are achievable. Ah, that's an interesting one. Your plans are achievable. Now, at the beginning of every year, we have lots of plans, but most of the plans are not achievable. Right? Thinking that I want to cut down on rice because I'm uh, thinking I'm overweight. But this process takes longer. It takes months and months. It won't happen in one day. Right? So one on one side, we should have patience. On the other side, it should be an achievable, realistic plan. Right? So you might be trying to get into that minimalist, what you call simple life. So look at the timing, look at the, the manageable nature, realistic, achievable nature of your wishes so that you are customizing your own simple life. Right, that is what called by sal lahu I don't say sal lahu is a mis is a mispronunciation. Santus, a lot of people say like this. Santus sakoche, subharoche, appakichoche, sal lahu Correct way is santus sakoche, subharoche, appakichoche, sal lahu kabuti, sal lahu now, when you are chanting together, other people will still make the mistake. Don't worry. You know how to pronounce it properly. You go on your own way. Right? Can you make, can you keep uh, making mistakes when you know how to pronounce properly? You can't do that. Because it's a language, so you have to pronounce properly. All right, last two. Something uh, uh, Sorry, sorry, Bante. Can I just interrupt for a while? Uh, what is the sal means uh, in this context? Sal lahuka. Actually, it is a double consonant. Uh, the, the idea is sir, actually. Sir, that sir, means yes. uh, well, well. A well, what you call uh, simple life, lahuka. So, uh, it, you know, sometimes the, the consonants are du what you call reduplicated just to get the combination. Oh, when you add them together, it duplicate the L, is it? Uh, yeah, so the some consonants are being uh, reduplicated. Okay, thank you. Just to, just to keep the combination flow. Right? Okay. Lahuka means simple, uh, minimums. Sant Indriyo, uh, Indriyo. Indriyo means? What does Indriyo mean? Anybody? Indriya? Senses, is it Ah, uh, Now I want to ask you, why is the Pali word Indriya given to the sense faculties? 
what is the connection? Now we know uh, this word is so popular everywhere in the text. Why is the Pali word indriya given to the sense faculties? What does, can you remember, can you trace out any connection to this Pali word anywhere? Uh, do you know the Pali word called indra? This Pali word? Let's write down. In. Indra. What is this? Or who is this? Another word for soccer. Ah. Ah, this is a actually this, the God. this is the proper name for the Sakka. Sakka is not the proper name. Sakka is an epithet. It's like the Buddha. Bhagava is the proper term for the Buddha. Buddha is an epithet. Right? Sabbanyu is an epithet, omniscient. Right? So the real name of Sakka is Indra. Now, what is the connection of Indra to in Indra's over here? Indriya. Indra means the master, owner, owner, master. So the Pali word Indriya comes from Indra. That means the owner, the owner of this, what do you call? Master of the five uh, aggregates. Now, five aggregates are being represented through the sense, sense faculties. So that's why uh, the word Pali word Indra, uh, sorry, Indriya is here. It comes from Indra. Now, Sang Indriya, Sang Indriya, that means this is what you call by your senses are calm. Your eyes are calm, your ears are calm, your nose is calm, your tongue is calm, your Body is calm, your mind is calm. How can we calm our eyes? Are our eyes calm now? What do you think about? Are our eyes calm now? Are they are they on to Akusalas now? Are they on to Ragadosa Moha now? Not that much. Huh? No. Not that much. But where where is my Raga? Where is my dosa? Where is my moha now? They are sleeping like a snake. Sleep. Those snakes are sleeping now. <laughs> but whenever the condition arises, those snakes are waking up. This happens till we attain Nibbana. So they are sleeping. You want to wake them up? Then it will be very dangerous. How they are going to wake up because of the conditions that are coming to those sense? They are waking up. So we call it Anusaya level. That means latent. Now our Akusalas are latent. They are sleeping. They are uh, very late and at this point. So, now, on one side, you have to understand there are physical senses. We call them uh, Shadindriya, six senses. And there are also five spiritual senses, faculties. What are they? They are a different category. The Buddha says, while you are trying to bring the ownership of your senses into you, onto your hand, you must master your spiritual faculties. Now, everybody has peace of mind. Everybody has peace of ear. Everybody has a nose. Everybody has a tongue. Everybody has a body. Everybody has a mind. But what about the spiritual spiritual faculties? What are they? Sadha, Viriya, Sati, Samadhi, Panya. Sadha means trust about the Buddha Dhammasa. Unwavering trust about the Buddha Dhammasa. Now, what do you think? Do we have the same amount of sadda about the Buddha Dhamma Sangha? Uh, it can fluctuate. Our sadda fluctuates depending on how well trained is our mind. Okay. You might be somebody who is going to Bihar every day, but your mind might not, your thoughts might not be trained that much. Okay. So it depends on how much are our thoughts trained within Sila Samadhi mind. Then, of course, your sadha is unwavering. It's not fluctuating. It's not going here, here, here. You know, whatever you, you hear about the Buddha, Dhamma, should be okay. But Sangha members, you have unwavering trust about. There may be some uh, uh, Sangha members who may have some certain things, but we don't we don't worry about it. Because they are humans too. Right? We don't have to destroy our, uh, our sadha because of somebody. Right? 
let's say there is someone who is behaving not in a good way. Now you are you are taking it so seriously. Then what will happen? That person will continue to behave like that, and your sadda will go away. So who is having the uh, what do you call loss? You are having the loss in your spiritual life because you are you are having an inner conflict with that particular sin. Right? What about in the second spiritual matter? Sadda, viriya. Viriya means energy. Energy must be always balanced on. If you have too much virya, too much energy, what will happen to you? Too much virya will give you uddhach, restlessness. restlessness. Of if you think that ah, today online party, I have to come and be like this and that, you know, I have to work so much hard and, you know, then you are trying to create lots of hyper energy. That might pose a lot of uddhach. The class, I will attend. I will learn something the same. Yeah. If you have too less virya energy, what's happening is that you will come up with laziness of your thoughts and uh, mental factors, difficulties. So, sadda virya sati. Sati means bea awareness, which means this whole right mindfulness practice. Right? We have to master all the time. Then, sadda virya sati, samadhi. Samadhi means Right concentration, not concentration, right concentration. Because your mind, your thoughts will be concentrated even by listening to a song, right? But in that concentration, you will have raga, dosa, mona coming up, right? You have certain, I mean, there are certain acceptable levels of raga, dosa, mona at that point. But, but you will be concentrated. What is the Buddhist concentration, which is called by samma, samma? Sati, not Sati, Samma Sati, not Sati. I always say that uh, Sati is everywhere, but Samma Sati is hardly anywhere. Samadhi is everywhere, but Samma Samadhi is hardly anywhere. Of course, it's Buddhist. It's not Hindu. Sadda Virya Sati Samadhi, Panna, wisdom. The wisdom, what you call, not the lofty wisdom, the minimal levels of our wisdom, like Samadhi, Samma Sankapa, and then higher level of our wisdom. When you get it, when you uh, you get it, you are getting that when you are practicing the normal. So these sense faculties, uh, sp spiritual faculties must be mastered every day in addition to managing your own sensual faculties. While managing, always try to strengthen your sense faculties. If you are not making your sense faculties strong, enough, then what will happen? The external objects will take you over. They're going to be strong. Very easy. Then the, the, everything that you see will take you over. Everything that you will hear will take you over. Everything what will uh, what you uh, smell will take you over. Everything you see outside in a restaurant will take you over. Uh, all the touch will take you over. All the thoughts will take you over. No. We are going to take over our eyes, uh, what you call images, our seeing. We're going to take over what we hear. We're going to take over what we smell. We're going to take over what we taste. Not that taste, let taste will take us over. We're going to take over what we feel as touching. We're going to take over our thoughts. So on one side, we are doing that. On the other side, we are mastering our spiritual practice. Sadda, virya, sati, So uh, by doing so, you are becoming a person whose senses are calm, both physical senses and spiritual senses. This is a must mandatory thing for metta. Last one, nipa kocha. Nipa kocha. What does nipa kocha mean? Prudent, Mante, prudent. There was one student uh, in a university where I did a retreat, asked me, Bhante, my name is Nipako. Can you tell me the meaning? <laughs> Interesting. Who gave you this name? I can't remember. Somebody gave me this term. Okay, Nipako means, Pako means, what you call in Pali, Pachati, cook something. When you cook something, we call Pachati. Right? Cook, Pachati. Then this Pako comes from that cooking, 
Now, what is the relationship between cooking and uh, this nipaku? Actually, the, the meaning has to be taken as you are someone who is properly grown. When you cook something, you have to cook properly. If you don't cook properly, people will get sick. Right? If you bake something, you have to bake properly. Right? So, nipaku means you are someone who is adequately grown in your in your life in terms of your your mindset in, in terms of your thoughts speech and actions so me means in particular so you have been grown in particular regarding your thoughts speeches and action only when you have been grown as such you can understand what's going on within you what's going on with other people this is why i said and train grown in what is necessary to do. Now, have you seen uh, people who are claiming, uh, you know what, if that brother comes over to this event, everything will be taken care of. If that sister comes to the Bihar or somewhere, everything will be taken care of. If so and so uh, were to be here, we don't have to worry about anything. Why is it? They, they are fully grown. They know what to do. When other people are there, they don't know what to do. They are like, you don't know. <laughs> right? So Nipako means someone who maybe as a as a word, as an habit, what you have to understand is you becoming someone who is fully alert of what to do, what not to do, because you have been grown fully into that particular activity, into that particular what you call uh, ability. So Pako means uh, what you call uh, cook, properly cook, grown, well-grown, well-cooked. That means well-grown person in terms of actions, thoughts, and speeches. All right. The time is almost there. Then, upper gabhu. What is gabhu? Anybody? Gabhu? Gabhu means a womb. A womb of a lady. Then, why upper gabhu? Is it a small womb? Another meaning of gabba is swollen. Now, when there is a womb with, with the pregnancy, you see it's swollen. So the idea that is given to the gabba is swollen. Have you seen people who are very swollen in their head? Very arrogant, very aggressive. They don't listen to others. Uh, they think they know everything. They are swollen. Their head is swollen. Now here, upper gabba means less swollen. Head is not swollen. So when your head is not swollen, you are very courteous, you are very friendly, you try to understand, you try to be on the ground at the grassroots level, you try to understand. Not You are not trying to be in the sky. Right? So now you might understand the literal meaning. Gabba means, what do you call? Womb. But not the womb, the nature of the womb, that means a swollen area of, of, a, of a young lady's uh, you know, that place. So the swollen nature is alluded to somebody's mindset. A swollen head, a swollen mind, a swollen perspective, a swollen person. So now here, upper gabbo means someone who is less swollen, who is who is on the ground, who understands things that he needs to attend, that she needs to attend. She's, you know, uh, what do you call cooperating with everybody very well. Very nice person, very courteous, very discreet person everywhere. Upper gap, right? Finally, uh, this is it. Kule so Ananugirto. Now, this one is particularly for the monks and nuns. The Buddha says, don't attach to, don't be greedy for certain Dayaka families, devotees families. Because uh, that might be an issue. So, I think uh, on the lay life side, what I say is that if you are married, you take care of your, everyone in your family, husband, wife, children, but don't be greedy for them. Don't be greedy for them. You may have attachment. Yes, you can't stop those attachments because they are your inner people. But don't be greedy. If you are greedy, things will take on a different way. All right. That means you are trying to, you are trying to minimize your greed, not becoming so much greedy about, uh, greedy onto your family. Because greedy, whatever the greed is, not good, right? Uh, we have a Buddhist story. Uh, a couple passed away with lots of greed. And then uh, 
actually uh, the wife passed away and then she became a snake like a rattlesnake she's coming always around the man so greedy about that man and finally uh, he became ferocious and he did some wrong so i mean well i mean we appreciate people's love care each other but don't bring those precious feelings onto a greed because then you will get stuck you know all right let's see again uh, concisely santu sapo means contented subharu means easily satisfied appakicho means uh, with less i would say uh, less duties in the sense of uh, number and the thoughts and sal lahuka buddhi means uh, what do you call a simple life a custom tailored simple life santindriyo means your both senses or physical senses and spiritual senses are well you know uh, well managed say uh, calmed nipaku means grown you are fully grown into what you are appagabbo means you are less swollen in terms of your uh, you know ideas thought views about you about others kule so anubid the kula mean families you are not having greed onto your family all right uh depending on the time uh, i would uh, suggest you to ask questions uh, about this uh, next uh, thursday is that okay with you should be okay yeah so save the questions for next uh, uh, thursday all right so let's transfer the good karmas and share the good karmas with the devanagar yeah? may all the good karmas which we be in a kiv today be transferred to uh, all the departed ones may they be well and happy and may they attain the supreme bliss of nibbana sadhu sadhu sa idam me jati nan hoku sukita hum punyati yo idam me jati nan hoku sukita hum punyati yo idam me jati nan hoku sukita hum punyati yo me deva naga mahitika share all these good karmas may they be well and happy may they protect and bless all of you for good health quality of life and prosperity may they also attain supreme bliss of nibbana sadhu sa ിമിനാഗമു yavali bana patya finally may all the good karmas which we been given today be helpful and supportive for all of us to attain supreme bliss of nibbana sadhu sadhu abhivadana silis nichang vadha pachayinu chataru ma vadhanti ayuvannu sukham balan vayura rupya sampatti sadhu sampatti me che ഹാപ്പി ഫ്രൈഡേ ഗുഡ് നൈറ്റ് ഗുഡ് നൈറ്റ് താങ്ക് യു താങ്ക് യു ബന്തേ ബൈ ബൈ സി യു താങ്ക